Yay! All right. Hey guys, Najm Lee here. This is Spiritual Sessions, and um, I'm going to wait for a few minutes uh, to get everybody in. So, and I'm going to post as well. <laughs> Hey Bernadette! Hi! Hey! Okay, I'm just um posting like I said, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes for people to come in. Let me post this on my I know, right? Same here. I missed you too. I'm so excited tonight. I'm really excited. So I can't wait to like get started. So I'm just going to wait. Let everybody know we're starting. If they're missing the link, I don't know. But let's get people in here. <laughs> Indigo, here we go. All right. Okay, so I just posted. Hey, Becky, Sa. how you doing, girlfriend? Hey, if those coming in, just say hello so I know you're here. Thank you for saying hi. Oh, yay! I'm excited, too. I'm so excited. Make sure you have a pen and paper or notebook. Because, girl, we're going to be taking notes. We're going to be taking notes. Hey, girl. <laughs> we're going to be taking lots of notes. Tonight is going to be pretty big. So, I suggest get your favorite pen, some paper or notebook and take some notes. Hey, Emmy, how you doing? Welcome, namaste, welcome. Let's get people in here. Let's get people, I'm so excited to start, but I'm going to wait a few minutes more. I'm, I'm so excited. I've been doing pretty good. My, like, March was like crazy because my health was just like, ugh. But I'm feeling much better and getting my energy back so yeah you got your pen and paper yes 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 i'm going to wait you know get people in going to wait going to get them in here so super excited let's get going um maybe i should do it also okay let me do this let's see Yeah. Hi, Katisha. Welcome, Sean. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm super excited. Make sure you have a pen and paper. Pen and paper. Pen and paper. Pen and paper or a notebook, whatever is good, because we're going to be taking scrupulous notes. Um, I'm trying to see, like, who else. Um, you love the background? Thanks, Sean. Thank you. 
So, all right. We are live on. I'm just posting um, just to let everybody know and then I'm going to start. So if you are joining now, just let everybody know, say hello, say hi, namaste, whatever. Hey, Angelique. Hey, girl. Say hello to everybody. Um, Indigo. Ingo Eleven Tribe Like Sunni P um hmm okay uh okay Namaste Namaste Hello Sistar Hello Hello Tribe Okay for those that are joining I am Najam Lee if this is your first time doing a session with me. Congratulations. Welcome, welcome. Um, good evening. <laughs> yes, warriors, spiritual warriors, right? Um, so I'm going to give it like three more minutes and then I'll, we're going to set the tone. And, um, you know, for those who don't know, I'll get into that more, but let's wait for about three more minutes and then I'll start. Three more minutes, three more minutes. <laughs> An explosion, right? <laughs> Thank you, Angelique. Thank you. Hey, Latrice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay! We got Latrice in the house. Woohoo! I am so excited. I am so excited. I am so excited. So make sure everybody, I'm going to say it again, make sure you have a pen and a notebook or a paper because it's going to go down tonight. All right, two more minutes. Two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. I'm doing good. Everything is up. Everything is cool. Um, I've just been working on some projects. And uh, so, yeah, when it's ready, I'll roll it out. <laughs> All right. Pen is handy. Yes, pen is handy. Thank you. Is this live going to stay up to watch later again? Um, hmm. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Yes. Okay, one more minute. One more minute. One more minute. Oh, yeah. I'm so stoked. Get your pen, girl. Get your pens. I'm so excited. Countdown, man. Countdown. All right, let's see. Do, do we need a little music or something? <laughs> I don't know. Do we need something in the background? Maybe too intense. I got my water. Because you know, girl gonna be talking. Awesome, okay. We in the, we in it. Welcome, welcome, everyone. And for those that are just joining or will be joining, that's okay. Just grab a pen and paper and just jump in. Um, so, again, I am Najm Lee. This is your first time doing, like, a session with me, a class with me. 
or video with me, welcome. That's great. I'm super excited to be here and to do this. Like it's just been a pull on my heart to do. And I think I'm gonna do it weekly, we'll see. Um, like a, every Friday around this time, 7.30. Um, in Hinduism, we would call this satsang, right? Satsang, S-A-T-S-A-N-G. Okay, satsang. And, um, but I'm calling it spiritual sessions because not a lot of people can speak Hindu. So spiritual sessions is like a satsang in Hinduism where you come together and those are on a spiritual path come together with a guru or a teacher or a guide and we'll ask questions or you ask questions i answer or i'll teach something and then we can ask questions upon what i'm teaching um sometimes ones need advice or want some insight and um and that's what a satsang is like. So tonight I'm going to do a little session on some of the questions. Now did everybody see like the questions that I posted throughout the this week? Raise your hands, just give me a high five if you did. And if you answered any of those questions, let me know. I'm going to take this off a little bit. I'm a little hot. Um, so if you did see, awesome. If you didn't see, that's okay. Um, that's okay. Do not worry, Latrice. Do not worry. I'm going to go over some of those questions and some of the trigger questions that um, some people answered. There was one that triggered a lot and a lot of people answered and it was like wow and they were answering honestly so i was super excited to see that and um your honesty and honesty with yourself and then it gave me an insight of what's going on where you guys are because i read each one and um things that you're seeking and things that need clearing and um and everything so before I like dive deep, quick announcement. If you want to learn more about, um, you know, learning how to protect yourself, learning about sacred protection, how to create a sacred circle, a lot of you have asked me about this, so I'm posting it, and it's um, with this video, which is omsacredcircle.com. Just click it, go over there, and all the details and everything is in there. And it's a workshop that you guys can do. It's a class, an online class, that I go really in detail about Sacred Circle of Protection and what that is and how you can do it for yourself on a daily basis. Um, and then the other announcement is um, ones that have been asking about intuitive readings, and getting some like spiritual coaching and some healing, some guidance, just go over to najamlee.com. That's my main website and check it out. Go over to like book a service or something and you'll see like all what I offer. Some things are not posted there. So if there's something that you want me to do with you or you need help in, just let me know to send me an email or message me on Facebook at Najm Lee and we can um, link up and we can go through PayPal or whatever, not a problem. Um, and then the last thing, because I'm gonna be doing some shorter segments of like spiritual sessions on my um, Instagram stories. So just follow me at Najm Lee on Instagram and um, cause those are gonna be coming really soon. All right, out the way. So let's get into our meditative state. We're gonna set the tone. So what does that mean? I want you to relax, close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your nose, in through your nose again and out through your nose and relax, okay? So you're gonna breathe in and out three times through your nose, all right? So I'm gonna be ringing the bells my tambourine and so that we can set the tone so you know calling your guides calling whoever you like to during this time 
So we're going to do this for about a minute, okay? And here we go. Okay, all right. I hope you guys felt good with that. <laughs> so as you guys are coming back, take a deep breath in and just relax. Just relax. Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> take a deep breath in and relax. Hello, Melanie. Namaste. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to step into um, some of the questions that came in, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about ringing in the ears um, and what that is and stuff. Do you find I mean, you don't have to, you just, we're just starting. We're like about to like get into it, so you, it's good timing. Very good timing. Okay, so one of the questions that um, I posted, which was, when you leave this body to return again, a new identity, is that hell or heaven? I think I posted it at Najam Lee. This was one of the questions that I got. Um, I mean, that came through. And I posted it, and some people said hell, some people said heaven. And so I'm going to read it to you again, and I really want you to think. You can write this down, think this through. When you leave this body, right, this, this casing, to return again a new identity, is that hell or is that heaven? What do you think? Is that hell or is that heaven? And so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. When we leave this body, this body, we were the ones who chose, right? We chose this particular casing. Everyone looks different. Everyone is um, has a different mindset, a different thought process and everything, right? Of how they look at things. When you're in a group collectively and you're on, say, a similar subject, then collectively you may think the same on that particular subject. But for the body, the body, this is something that you've chosen, right? So if it's something that you've chosen, that means we gotta go back to when you chose it. 
So we got to go back to where you were before you came here. And so that's a question you should ask yourself. Well, where was I before I came here? Where was I? Who was I? You know? So before we take on a body, we are in spirit. We are in our spiritual selves. Okay? Um, and when we take on a form, it's to learn something. It's to experience something. And so earth itself, I'm going to be as, as clear as I can with everything. Earth itself is like contained, right? Um, basically. And there are a lot of overseers with or over earth, overlooking earth, administering whatever is needed, right? There are so many dimensions and levels within earth itself that um, we are in this particular part of it, okay? And some will be in another part of it, right? We're not gonna be that. It's almost like you are living in Canada and I live in New York, you know? Um, you're seeing something totally different in Canada and I'm seeing something totally different in New York, okay? So uh, if that makes any sense of how Earth is in a mix of the galaxy and the uni universes, okay? So when we pick on um, a vessel, right? This particular vessel, we're coming here to learn something. We're coming here to do something. We're coming here to experience something because the last experience was to get something else, right? So it's almost like you go into a containment center, right? or a waiting area, right? Because you're gonna circulate back around. There are some who decide, I am not coming back here and I wanna circulate and go somewhere else. I am tired of coming down to Earth, right? Because Earth is actually, out of all the universe, uh, all the planets in this particular galaxy, this particular place, we're, we're just animals, we're just like, we're not getting it, we're not learning it. Some are learning it, but not the whole learning it. And so we keep, many keep recycling back, back and back and back and back. And so can that be a heaven or can that be a hell? Most likely it's gonna be a hell because the thing is to learn and go somewhere else. It's not to learn and come back, learn and come back, learn and come back. You know, so then you have to ask yourself, why do I keep coming back here? How many times have I been here? And why do I keep coming back to this earth plane? What is it here that I'm supposed to experience, pick up, learn, and so that I can go to the next destination? And I don't come back here. You know, some of us are experiencing our life very hard, you know, or have gone through so many obstacles and problems. Sorry, guys. Don't ask me. <laughs> I think that's um, uh, Facebook interrupting. But anyways, I'm going to continue. So we keep coming back. A lot of us keep coming back. There's a few of us that's probably been here maybe twice, maybe three times. There's many of us that's been here 10, 12, 20 times and keep coming back and keep coming back. And you're at all these different places. You may pick one family or you may pick another family. Some of you may have walked in at one point and then went through the, the um, uh, black hole and come through the whole thing and start afresh. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things that, uh, yes, I'm burning incense. <laughs> I'm burning incense. Um, there's many that will circulate and do many things. So then you have to think, why am I coming back here all the time? Why? Why am I here all the time? What What is it that I need to learn? Or do I like coming here? Do I like coming back and circulating around and around and going through these different channels and experiences and bodies and stuff? You know, is this fun for me? Is this a play for me? Is this what, right? So a lot of times, so what happens is, um, and what's, what's not fun 
And this is the hell that a lot of people talk about and a lot of experts talk about is that you when you come, when you learn something and you come back, right, you go through forgetfulness and it's like starting all over again, right? You go through a blackout and you have to like do things or set things to remember, which is agony. And sometimes you get it in that lifetime and sometimes you don't to like do it again and go through that channel of forgetfulness and to, you know, move on. On other planets, they don't even go through that. They don't even experience half the stuff that we experience here. It's mind boggling to them. So on other planets, you are, you learn and you elevate to the next. You learn and you elevate to the next because you're taking what you are remembering and expanding on it to the next, right? Here, the entrapment is you are forgetting and starting all over, like deleting all software and starting all over, right? So then you think about it. Is this really heaven or is this really a hell? that I keep doing this to myself and why. And so I want you like from tonight, really think about your journey. Really think about why are you here? What's the talent that you have? You know, so that you can learn it. Ask your guides. Cause they're actually waiting for you to say, you know what? I really need to know why I'm here. Show me why I'm here so I can learn it quick. What's my mission here so I can learn it quick? What I need to experience so I can learn it and go and move on and move move forward, you know? Your guides are there to help you. You have two that are assigned with you everywhere that you go. They are with you from birth. They are with you. They're assigned to you, right? Everything that you are going through, you have chosen it. You have picked it from the parent or single parent to all the experiences that you are, ha that's happening or has happened in your life, you have chosen. That's a layout, that's a plan, that's a blueprint before coming to earth. And so you have guides that are with you too, on each side of you that are there to make sure you're protected and second, to help you to remember and to help you to gain what you need to gain and go forward, okay? That, that, you can, you can look that up. I mean, I mean, when I say look up, not on Google, go to the library and get some books. Um, you can talk to your guides and they will open up a window of information or they will show you the information or lead you to where the information is. Um, you just have to open your mouth and speak up to your guides, okay? And many of you are not. Many of you are just like, trying to do everything by yourself and you have a team with you that you're not utilizing you know and it's time to utilize them it's time to talk to them it's time to let them know you are ready to make this happen okay so the other question that came through and this goes into the topic detachment or attachment I'm going to say again detachment or attachment, right? So a lot of us, we get so attached to everything, like every single thing from our family, our kids, our work, um, our friends, our, our car, our material things, every single thing we're attached to. We're so attached then we're, we're holding on to it instead of letting go in order to do what you have to do. Attachment or detachment. When you detach, you allow and you create a big opening of space to come in and help guide you forward. Attachment or detachment. When we attach, we are in ego all the way, ego. Um, when we are in detachment, we're actually in spirit in heart. Not so much the mind, we're more in spirit and in heart. The ego is all the way the mind, okay? And so you have to always ask yourself this question, am I, am I too attached to this, am I attached to this, or am I detached from this, you know? 
if this was to go away today, am I cool with that? You know, <clears throat> can I move on with that? You know, because the less attachment you have, the more free that you are and able to do your work spiritually, to able to do the things you have to do spiritually. We get so attached to the point where we think this is what it is. And we're, we don't remember that we're looking through a photo, you know, a camera lens through our eyes. We're looking through a camera lens and we're seeing what we want to see, right? But we're not actually seeing. Seeing, okay? We're actually just utilizing camera lenses. And so it's about stepping behind yourself through spirit and really looking over yourself and really seeing what it is you truly need to see and do. And how you do that is you have to detach. You gotta detach yourself. You cannot be hold on, even to some of your crystals or whatever. Sometimes crystals walk away, disappear, whatever. They're meant to do that. They are meant to do that. If they are finished with you, they got to go. They gotta go do something else that they need to do. If you are not using those crystals and they see that you are not using it, they are going to leave your behind alone because these are beings, okay? And they've taken on that particular form to help you if you are utilizing them, okay? So you look at rocks, trees, um, crystals, uh, water, any of these things. There are beings that are over them. And then when you encase them and bring them into your home or your space and you are not using them correctly, they're going to walk out and leave, disappear. And they know how to do that. It's all spirit. They know how to do that. So I am telling you guys to really attach or detach. Which one? Attach or detach. When you're working with something, be so grateful, be so thankful, and utilize it. And if they're done, and they're done, and they disappear, that's great, okay? That's, that's awesome. They've done what they have to do. Um, and so that's the other thing I want to touch on was attachment and detachment. Um, the other question... Okay, so the other part is, um, the other question that I asked was, how would you feel if all that you believed was false? How would you feel if all that you believed was false? False identity, non-existent, and it can go on and on. What if all that you believed was false? How would you feel? How would that how would that affect you? Again, so we just touched on how we came here. We're choosing to come here, right? To learn what we need to learn. So when we come into this case in, right, we're learning things. We choose how to enter this place. So your your gateway or your key to come in here is through the parents that you choose. They're a gate. That's a gateway, okay? And you, usually when um, you are choosing and you wonder why people either go through um, miscarriages or something like that, it's not a bad thing. It's mostly about I've come, I've done, I've seen, okay, I don't need to be here. That's not the one, right? Um, and a lot of times they're choosing. How do I know that? How I know that is through a lot of visions that came through and through my daughter. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, like the Spirit spoke to me so clearly in, like, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me and showing me things. And a lot of times they are searching, okay? And so they'll shop, or it's almost shopping, so they'll hang out with you. And sometimes your kids, you wonder, how they know I know, you know, where I was and what I was doing and all of that. They were there before coming into the, to the body that they were in. They're there hanging out with you. And so they're checking you out. 
and they'll go from parent to other parent maybe look you choose like out of three or four or five and condense it and like okay let me hang out and see which one which one what should I learn from and so they'll choose and once they choose their spirit is with you until the time of they're ready to enter and that's usually between seventh and eighth month when the vocal cords the lungs are created at that moment air breath comes through before then they're just hanging with you in spirit. They're not there in you. So the moment that that's created in a female that's carrying is when spirit comes in. And so that's seventh and eighth month, usually around the time that's 31 weeks, 33 weeks gestation. Um, when a child's vocal cords or lungs are created. Okay, and so when you're choosing to like learn from whoever's going to teach you, yes, sometimes it's, it's either a really good life or it's really a rough life, but you've chosen it to learn. And a lot of times we see people, they'll blame family, their mother, their father, they'll blame whatever. All the fingers are pointed at other people, but you've got to remember what was the blueprint before I came here. What was the blueprint? What did I choose to experience and why? Where is this leading up to and why, right? So we ha so with that then comes attachment or detachment and also comes with um, things that you are taking on to believe, right? Or taking on to say, okay, I'll utilize this, I gain some information, but you forget not to attach yourself to it, to detach from it. And so we get so caught up in religion is one of the biggest ones that spirit talks about a lot, religion, that we get so caught up in it that we will like die for it. We will like kill for it. We will like do all this stuff for it. And if we really remember things, you have to need spirit. Spirit knows neither, um, neither uh, negative or positive, right? It's just what it is. It's just what it is. They don't have feelings or emotions and all that other stuff. That's a human experience. So it is what it is. What it is, it is, <laughs> you know, in the universe. What it is, it is in the universe. And we have to remember that's our, that's our true self when we are in the universe, in spirit, you know, that, you know, we are... Um, not having those emotions is just what it is. It's either that or it's either that. It's just what it is, okay? So when we learn and remember these things, then it's like, okay, I need to unravel and detach myself from this. These are just, these are whatever it is on this planet, but then we need to expand ourselves and really look beyond this planet, right? We're like, you know, in a cup or in a bottle all the way down here. And when we come out, everything's up here, all the space or whatever. But we forget, oh, I'm just here temporarily until I leave this, right? So then you have to ask yourself these things, right? It's only tools utilized for this earth plane. That's it. Use t information utilized for this earth plane. That's it. And we get so caught up in it. And we have to unravel this. Unravel so that you're not attached like that. You're not attached. You see it, you experience it, you let it go. You see it, you experience it, and you let it go. I'm going to say it again. You see it, you experience it, and you let it go. Like a passing car. Like, you know, you rode a car, you got out of it. Right? You rode the bus, you got out of it. You rode the train, you got out of it. You rode the plane, you got out of it. You're not in the plane like, yo, hold it on. and like, I live here, this is my place, you know. Tch, tch, tch. No, you rode it, got to your destination, you got out of it. The same thing. The same thing. You got to remember these things, you know. <laughs> you know, so don't let go. You guys are holding that you're not bringing anything in. Let go. Let it all go. You're riding in a plane and you let it go. 
Y'all riding, if you can remember riding in a plane, that you don't own the plane, right? Do you own the plane? You know, like American Airlines. You took American Airlines to your destination. Do you own American Airlines? No, right? You took it, it got you where you need to go, and you left it. It's an experience. You experience flight. You experience flight from going one place to another. You experience that. And if you can remember that, like write that down. If you can remember that, then in each thing that you're doing, then you can flash to that story or flash to that example and, re and remember, oh, yeah, right, detach. So it's a practice. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. It's a practice. It's something that you do every single day. You do throughout your day, you know, that it's a practice. Same with like a pen. You use the pen, but you're not holding on to it you know, for dear life, and you go to die for this pen, you're going to war for this pen, you, you know, you're not doing that. You're using it, it's a tool. After you're done, you put it down. Right? You put it down. So, now that we have that, I know it's going pretty fast, but I'm going to get to something. <laughs> Um, so the other question was, um, you guys were just so awesome. This one, um, this one that you guys did was, if you were to hide a truth about yourself, what would that be? be honest thank you so much for um sharing for all of you that shared but for those who didn't get to write it down if you were to hide a truth about yourself what would that be and be honest and so the reason why i asked that question well it's not really me it's like guides act it's act telling me to like write it that's i'm just an instrument okay so the reason is that they're looking at this is that there's a lot of fear. And so a lot of things that came through all add up to fear. A lot of the truths that you guys wrote adds up to fear. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear of oneself. And so you have to ask yourself this other question. Why are you afraid of yourself? Why do you fear yourself? Ask that question. Why do you fear yourself? Why do you fear yourself? And so when we start asking these questions, we're actually allowing ourselves to kind of let go and loosen up our grip and just really look within, right? There's some that's like, uh, fearful of looking at their own soul, their own spirit through their eyes. You know, if you looked in the mirror and look through your eyes and see your soul, what does it look like? What does it feel like? You know, and so many people are afraid to look in the mirror. And you have to ask yourself, why? The beauty of who you are, why? You know, why are you afraid to look in the mirror? Why are you afraid to look in your eyes, right? The portals to the soul, right? Your eyes are the portals or windows to the soul, right? Because as spirit, the spirit is bigger than the human form, okay? The spirit actually expands out to about 200 feet in, a, uh, in circumference, okay? So that means that... This is just a casing used. You're bigger than your human form. So your human, your spiritual form is looking through your human eyes to have the experience, to um, see what the experience is, to see things, to touch things, to get an idea of what things feel and what things are. They look through the windows right here of your eyes. 
So with that, you can see, oh, I'm just a casing here. I am just a temple that is housing um, my spirit, my soul. So now that you know that you're bigger than this body, right, which you can feel anytime, right, you can experience anytime, then it's then you have to ask, then what am I fearing if I'm really not this? I'm actually bigger than this. Then what am I fearing? Why have these why create these experiences, right? Of fear. You know. Because then it's like your spirit or your higher self, um, your soul is going to be like, why is she afraid of me? Why, why is this acting like this? You know, or why is he acting like this? You know, they can, they can, they can see it, you know, which is your own self, right? Your own self. So you have to ask these questions of why am I creating the, this type of feeling of my own self, right? So the fear, there's no such thing, right? There's no such thing. It's just an ambiance of something that you think you need to do, right? Thinking meaning the ego thinks it needs to do, right? So with that, I'm going to tell you, okay, Angelique, no problem, sweetie. I will... Um, I will keep this up, okay? So watch it later on. Not a problem. All right? I will keep it up. All right, so... So you got to really understand your own self of asking these questions. And when you, when you really pry and see your ego is trying to take over, your ego is the one that's like creating this experience like that, your ego is the one that's like, <laughs> wait a second, you don't want to do that. No, don't be looking in through your eyes to try to see yourself. Like, what are you doing? Like, why? You know, the, your ego is going to create all this and your ego's in the mind. It's not even in the heart. Your ego's in the mind. And the mind chatters, okay, and chatters and creates all these different things so that it kind of stops you and be like, nah, mm -mm, why? <sighs> Hello? Because the ego is all about its own self, which I would say is very narcissistic, our ego, okay? It's like a superstar who wants all the attention and does not want you to look past it. It's like, you got me. Hello? Like, why are you looking past all this? That's your ego. Your ego is stopping you from the truth of who you are. Ego does that all the time. They will create stories. They will invent stories in order for you to, like, not even do it. Just think about, like, just do this. That's it. Just do this. Okay? The ego. Yes, girl. The ego is a hot mess. Okay? A, a really spoilt, narcissistic person, or like being, I would say. I wouldn't say person, but being. Um, and that's the mind. It has no idea about the heart and doesn't want to. It does not want to link with the heart. Because when you link with the heart, you link with spirit. Right? It does not want to have any business with the heart. So... I'm going to tell you, so the ego is going to try to create this feeling of, don't be looking, oh my God, did you see that? Oh my God, did you see that? No, don't do that, don't do that. While you're looking at yourself, you're looking at your true self, the soul of who you are. So you have to tell your ego, step to the side, I'm in control here. I'm in control here, okay? And I'm going to look because I'm the one who runs this. Not you, you know, and that I is you have to say, you have to look back and say, okay, which I am I talking about? And you have to say, oh, 
the spirit of the spirit of my being i'm is what i'm feeling i'm i'm attaching myself to or i'm connecting myself to um and so, yes, yes, Latrice, yes, the ego will play games. I mean, it got every trick in the book and beyond, okay? So that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm like, y'all, detach, 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 detach. Because your ego wants you to attach. You see that gold necklace? Don't let nobody wear it. Don't let nobody have it don't lose it you just spent like a guap on that you know your ego is like oh my god and then you having these emotions like oh yeah i want to keep it to myself i want to keep it to i don't want to show nobody no nah, you know <laughs> and we're playing tick like we're playing tennis right back and forth back and forth back and forth the ego y'all the ego has its life okay it's life so when you see and you and, and all the questions that I've been ta um, telling you guys, the questions that I've been um, just going over, this is ego giving you these like feelings. So the more the ego grows, it's pushing you away from your own self, your soul, your spirit, right? So what you're working on is letting go of the ego. Letting go of the mind, letting go of the mind, letting that chatter go, you know? It's almost like, just another example is like, you know, if you were born of the time where you didn't, we didn't have like cell phones and stuff, and we were using the regular dialing phones, and um, you know, you didn't carry it with you, it was like, I'm going to do my thing. If they call, leave a message, done. Now, we're like, oh, I got to check. Every, like, minute, I got to check. I got to write. I got to check. Right? With these cell phones, that's ego. That's ego. Because the ego is, like, feeding itself. The ego is like, who, who talked, who, who, who's sending me an email? Oh, my God, who texted me? Oh, my gosh, who liked my photo? Somebody liked my video. Somebody watched my video. You see that? You're doing great. You're doing great. Do more. Do more. Do more. Right? That's ego. Ego is like filling itself up. Okay? And like, yes, more attention. More attention. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. And your poor spirit's like, God damn it. <laughs> your spirit's just like, why? Why? I don't need this. I already know what this is. Let's go to something else. Let it go. Let's go to something else. You know, that back and forth tennis play. So, <laughs> you guys laughing. Yes. <laughs> now y'all get it. <laughs> you gotta put that ego in check. So when you, when you hear that voice talking to you, really question, who's talking to me? Is that ego or is that my guides? Is that ego or is that my guides? Okay, because ego will create all kind of characters to make you feel like you're doing the right thing. Okay, ego will do that. <laughs> ego will conjure up. So you really got to, got to really check it. You know, yes, in the beginning it's kind of tedious. Like, wait a second, is that you know? But the more that you do it, you're going to really know the voice of your ego. You're going to really understand what the play is. Like a, you know, like a football game or something, you get to know what the play is, you know? So, yes, it's like intense when it comes to ego. So the more that you detach yourself from ego, detach yourself from the mind, the more connected you will be to your own spirit, your own self. You understand me? Your own higher self. The being that's here just for the experience. That's it. Just for the experience and that's it. So I want to get into the next part of this, which is like you guys are like been asking me about too, is the ringing in the air. 
and a lot of you um, wanted to know what does it mean when you have a ring in the air and the question I asked for that was the ringing in your ear what did you say do or looked at seconds before the ringing in the air happened okay I'm going to read it again the ringing in your ear what did you say do or looked at seconds before the ringing happened okay write that down And we gonna get into it. And what's so funny, I this is a little bit of this, I'm gonna share a bit of this, but this is in my course that I'm putting together. And I I just thought it was like what an alignment, you know, <laughs> of that question coming through and I'm working on um I'm I meant and I'm working on that particular subject. Uh so um so let me just get some of the drink. Hold on. All right. When I was growing up as a kid, my mom, my grandmother <clears throat> would say, um, if you get a ring in any ear on the left side, if the left ear ringing, it means one thing. If the right ear ring, it means this thing. You know, is uh, um, for what I remember, they would say, if you if your left ear ring is bad news, if the right ear ring is good news, or something like that. And I would always be like, oh my god! From when I was a kid, my ear, I would get this ringing in my ear. Right? I did have my hearing checked out um, and everything, <clears throat> and I don't have like any anything like saying oh this ring in is because of this or that no i don't i don't have any like everything's clear the only thing on my right ear is that it's lessening with hearing but <clears throat> the ring in i've always wanted to understand this what does it mean because at certain points in my life or in my day if i said something or looked at something my the ring in will happen right and you just feel and you can feel it there's different tones to it um it's either a slow climbing or it's like you know like a big vibration um and so we all a lot of us especially um in this time frame have been talking about the ringing in the ears what does it mean my ear is ringing what does that mean you know is somebody talking about me that was another thing that was told to me when your ear is ringing somebody's talking about you or you go to hear from somebody you didn't hear from for a very long time maybe year two years whatever and sometimes when my ear would ring the phone would ring and and i would know oh this person is calling and i pick up and it's that person you know whether it's my mom my ear would ring and i'm like okay i know she's calling i'll pick up it's her my daughter's calling i pick up it's her like you just know a few seconds or a few minutes before um the phone rings or something so if you guys have experienced that give a thumbs up give a thumbs up you space ring in your ear. And so um, the ring in your ear is actually spirit. It's a spiritual meaning. It's um, an awakening system, right? It's um, Some people say you're, you're getting downloads, right? Some downloads are coming through. Um, let me see. And where the ringing comes in is there's a spiral part of the ear um, that's known as the um, the cochlear, okay, C O H L E A, um, cochlear, and it's spiral, okay. It's a spiral part. You have it in the left ear. You have it in the right ear, and it's the one that takes in whatever um, vibration coming through. It will take in that and push it out like a ringing okay so that means dogs do this too if you ever see dogs act up a certain way or they're barking like crazy 
they're hearing something and a lot of times they can hear um you you blow a whistle like one of those silent whistles but it can affect them so badly their hearing is so amazing but they can hear things um that is not physical it's spiritual and they'll either react to it or talk back to it by barking or whatever. And there are different tones of their barking that means certain things. They're receiving too, or they can see, or they can hear. Cats have it too. Um, cats will peek up and look in the direction where that ringing is, right? And can see, right? Because they can see beyond the veil, just like a dog can see beyond the veil. Um, <clears throat> So us as humans, we are having it too, but we're really taking notice of it um, lately. And so people have been inquiring and want to understand, like, what does this mean? So um, I am going to break it down a little bit to you guys. Okay, so in spirit, right? When the left ear or the left ear cochlear is ringing, it's receiving and grounding information um, that has to do with life on earth, okay? I'm going to say it again. It has to do with receiving and grounding information that you to do with life on earth. Okay, now, the right ear, the right cochlea, okay, receives and translates information from the spiritual realm, the galactic realms or levels that connects the spirit and um, the spirit and the other universes or the other galaxies, okay, so, or the other realms, okay, as I can say it. So it receives and translate information. The left ear is all about receiving and grounding the information to this physical life here, okay? All right? And so this is all about, um, you know, higher consciousness and transmitting information. And through transmitting information, um, it takes it into the air and through the pituitary gland, into the pineal gland, into the meridians of the body, or the light meridians that you know goes alongside the frame of your body, um, as well as um, in your aura. So sometimes, when your ear is ringing, sometimes your third eye or the pineal gland right, the third eye, will vibrate, right? So it's taken in, it's downloading. Everything's coming through, it's receiving, downloading through, okay? Hey, Katisha. Um, so, let me... Um, so the thing that I would encourage you to do, first, before wondering, just check your ears on a physical level. Go to the doctor and check your ears. Make sure everything's fine and working fine. Once you know everything's working fine, then you know the ringing of your ears is a spiritual spiritual thing. It's coming on the spiritual plane. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> and um, so... All that information is coming down. So just go to your doctor and check, okay, first. So you know physically your ears are fine. So I'm going to repeat one more time. The right ear cochlea receives and translates information from the spiritual galactic level that connects to the many realms of spirit. So you have different realms, different dimensions, different galaxies, different universes. So it's connected to all of that. So it will receive and translate that information. So sometimes you have a knowing, like your earrings, 
and you just know something, right? It'll come through. You just know. That's a translation, okay? And if it's coming from your right ear, it's a translation coming through um, from, from those galaxies or those realms. Now, if it's the left ear, it's going to receive and ground the information into your body, right? Into this life on earth okay, of what it is physically, for your physical life, okay? All right. So now that we know that, right, now that we know that, I want you to understand something, that we're living on an earth where everything, we everything's like left brain society, right? Everything's like numbers, mathematics, technology, equipment, those things. We're so left brain that we hardly use the right brain. We hardly, that's spiritual. That part where I just explained that you're connected to the different, um, you get in information or translations from the different galaxies and realms and stuff. We're not so balanced in that right brain hemisphere. We are so unbalanced to the point we're tipping over in the left brain hemisphere okay so the more you guys must be feeling ask yourself like have you lately been feeling like you want to do more creative stuff like you want to do art you want to do dance you want to do music you want to do you know you know all these different creative things if you've been feeling more drawn to that then that's your right brain telling you to start doing that. That's your right brain and your spirit especially telling you, I want you to do more of this so we can balance you out. We need to balance you out. So you've been drawn to like writing, poetry, spoken word or whatever like that or anything creative like creative art, creative dance, music, those things. Then you need to listen because that's your spirit telling you we need to balance you out. You're, you're too much left brain hemisphere. You need to be more right brain hemisphere. And when you get that and you start doing that and you balance yourself out, it makes it much more easier for you to have the other experiences that you need to have so that you can do what you're here to do and then go. You know what I'm saying? Do what you're here to do and go. So if you've been feeling that more, listen to it and do it, okay? Um, and so um, some people call that the language of light, that's, or some say the language of spirit or whatever. Um, and that's through painting, music, poetry, all these different things. These are light codes, okay? And so when you start painting and doing all these creative things, you're going to receive so much more downloads. It's a lot easier and a lot better and faster to receive the downloads that you need in order to, like, raise your vibrations and raise yourself up spiritually, okay? Um, because I'm going to tell you something. The... The more that we stick into the left brain hemisphere, like what's going on, that's what they're pushing everybody to be in and to stay in this society on earth. You must be seeing this, right? Which is more people are depressed. More people are committing suicides. More people are um, psychos, killings, and all these different rampages of attacks. And that's all left brain issues us all left brain because it's too much you're too much in it right sometimes you're around other people you feel happy you feel great but then all of a sudden your mood changes and you're sad you're depressed and you really don't know why left brain you're in an environment you shouldn't be in okay so you need to like really push yourself and change up a lot of things that you see that's creating this type of left brain hemisphere, right? And you need to bring in more of a right brain hemisphere, more music, like really good music, uplifting music, more art, start doing it, more writing, more poetry, more 
whatever it is that you love to do creatively, start doing it, okay? Do it. And in the process of doing it, spirit, you will get all these light codes and downloads coming through. And it's going to help on the, on the right brain hemisphere of your being. Okay? So when you start seeing that, you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, like all these things are coming through me and I didn't know. You start channeling stuff. Like, it's just amazing, man. It's just amazing. Um, uh, you see people on the, on the left brain hemisphere, you see people with paranoia. Like, just really, like, out of it. Like, some of the things that they're saying, some of the things that they're doing, you just don't understand, You right? You were seeing, like, all these this, like, unfair treatment. It's so left brain, it's ridiculous, right? It's a lot of, like, dangerous undercurrents moving. And they're moving in shadows, okay? And this is, like, an energy that's purposely moving in shadows, right? And so... The more that you work on your creative, the more that you're going to pull yourself out of that imbalance of the left and really become more of the right to even everything out. So I really encourage you to start doing that today. I really encourage you to look within with everything that we've talked about today, uh, which has been great. Um, I really encourage you. You guys got homework. So let's go back. <laughs> Your homework is until next Wednesday. I mean, next Friday, we talk again. Your homework is to start really peeling away what no longer is serving you. Start peeling away what no longer serves you. Okay? Um, so that means your ego. Right? What are the things that your ego is having you being attached to that's not serving you spiritually? And it's not serving you mentally or emotionally or physically. Okay? I want you to really dive into yourself, into your spirit, and start really looking at it. So write it down. Write all those attachments down. And go deep. Go down that rabbit hole of yourself. Okay, and pull it all up and look at it, okay, and really see all the things. Is it serving you? Is it helping you spiritually? You know, the other thing is to start speaking to your guides. I really want you to start interacting with your guides. They're there. They've been waiting for a, a whole lot of years just to communicate with you. And so start speaking to them. Start really um let them know you want to know what you need to be doing. What is it that you need to learn? What did I come down here on earth to learn? Ask them that. What did I come down to earth to learn? What is it that I need to do? Please show me. Please tell me. You know? And they're going to tell you. They're going to show you. They're going to guide you through it. You just have to be an open vessel to see it, to receive it, and do it. Okay, so that's your homework. Start diving in. Start communicating and really seeing what's no longer serving you. All right? And then next time your ear rings, right, whether it's the right ear or the left ear, make a note of what you did a few minutes before. What did you look at? What did you say? Uh, what did, you know, what did you do? Okay? What did you do? What did you say? What did you look at? You know, start really noticing. You know, the human form is a lazy form. We all know that. This thing don't want to do anything. If it's pushed to do anything, it gets really irritated, but we got to push it. So really focus and really help yourself in identifying the messages, okay? And that's it. So any questions, let me know how you like the class. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm all ears to answer.
If you enjoyed it, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And I'm going to come back on, on Friday, which would be the 4th, okay, 7.30. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll start again. <laughs> Okay, so tell me what, what, is there any questions? Anyone have any questions? Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Latrice. Thank you, ladies. You guys are so awesome. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Bernita. Thank you, Bekisa. Bec thank you. Yay! Awesome. No problem, Shaniqua. Yes. Yes. So if you have any questions, just post them or, yeah, write them up, post them. Um, I'm going to leave the video up so others can see it. Sabrina, you're welcome, Sabrina. You're welcome, Tiffany. Yeah, go ahead, Tiffany. I'm going to drink some water. Girl, got to get this water in. I'm diving deep. Your ears ring constantly. Yes, yes. If your ears ring constantly, I'm going to say first um, to check with your doctor. You can't tell if it's your right or left. Okay, so close your ears. Close one ear and really listen, being a really, like, quiet place like nothing is turned on nothing and close one ear close your eyes and listen close the other ear if it's like if it's an undertone current of like like a stream like a little stream of like ringing it could just be it can either be check your ears physically go to the doctor or oh everything checked out fine then you're probably being downloaded and so these downloads are going to be happening the more and more that you start working on your spirit and the more and more that they're going to raise your vibration so that's just what that's going on that's just like that thin line of downloads and rest rest uh, restoring of yourself restoring of the spirit and um, the things that's needed. So that's going to happen. And more that each level that you raise up and go to and start speaking with your guides and start really connecting, um, it may get a bit louder, uh, but that's okay because they, there's a whole lot of shifts going on um, in the realms anyways on different dimensions. So just expect that. So if that undercurrent of ringing is happening, it's a part of it. Not to be afraid. Don't freak out. Just ask, talk to your guys and ask, okay, what do I need to do? What I need to, you know, start doing? Um, why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Like get that information and start doing it. And then, like I said before, start, um, <clears throat> start doing more creative stuff more creativity I mean <clears throat> if you have like crystals around like I where I am I have crystals around so that it doesn't affect my spirit you can do that that's really good to do if you're utilizing a tech a technical device like a computer laptop or whatever make sure you have crystals around you okay all right, so the questions are coming. Yay! Okay. My guards are going to get so tired of me to see. <laughs> yes, Tiffany. Uh, Shaniqua. Sh sh okay, what does it mean to see images floating around when I meditate? So, a lot of times when you meditate, if you see images floating, you could be spiritually seeing other things or it could be like it could be your ancestors because your ancestors do um come around uh, around you a lot um and that's with everyone you have ancestors known and unknown so they do visit um 
And then you have your guides that are with you. But if you're being shown something in meditation, maybe that's what's going on too. It could be many things, but talk to your guides and inquire. Like if you do see an image, ask them, what is that? What does that mean? What am I supposed to do? Lamar, peace, long time. I hope all is well. Yes, everything is great, Lamar. Thank you. We just had an awesome session. I'm so excited. I am going to put it up and put it on repeat for you guys. So I'm just at answering questions now. So I hope that helped you, Shaniqua. Um, you know, just start, just ask your guys. The moment you see it, ask your guys, what is that? Show me, let me understand. And they will. You just need to, like, speak up. <laughs> just speak up. If that's one of the questions, if that's one of the questions, yeah, just put it down if you want me to speak about that next week. What what specifically about dreams? What do you want to learn? Okay. Have you heard about a rainbow event? It's like a rainbow cloud in the sky. I mean, it all depends. Like, I've seen that. I really don't really understand what it is because... Um, there are rainbows, and a lot of times when a rainbow happens, some of the clouds will take on that as well. So I really don't know. I really don't know what that means. I did see a video of a rainbow cloud, too, that, um, um, a rainbow cloud that, and then I don't know how real it is because I do know the government has been working on some things as well that are utilizing hologram, holograms in the sky. So I really don't know. Like, I really would have to see in what they're trying to do, what they're playing with. Because some things you see, I really don't know if it's government playing that or that's a UFO thing or it's just... A rainbow that happens somewhere across the world and the clouds are picking on that picking that up um, but I do know that the government has been working on holograms that they've been testing in the skies and some people have seen it some people you know are wondering what that is and I don't have like a concrete so I will go into meditation and, and see and ask but a lot of that sometimes is hologram Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, Latrice. Like, some of them, <clears throat> I just know the government's working on a lot of things. So you guys go see some stuff. Okay, Tisha, no problem. No problem. Yeah, Melanie, just plug me and let me see. I did see a video of it, so I do know that there's a lot of trickery being done <laughs> a lot of things on the dl you know yeah any other questions guys so if you have a question that you want me to answer for next friday just put it in the comment section below and i'll add it to the list and i know i only went through some of the questions today but they're basically all relevant to what we're speaking on today, which was great. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions you want me to look into for next week, just put them below in the comment and I'll add it to the list. And I'll see you Friday at 7.30 again, Eastern time. And um, usually I wait about 10 minutes to get, to get everybody in before I start, so. Um, and I do a prayer and I do a layout and stuff so that we have a focus. How do I find my guides? What do you mean find, Katisha? Your guides are right there. You have two of them on the left and on the right of you. Talk to them. <laughs> have them show themselves. Have them say, hey, I want to see who you are. I want to talk to you. I want to know, you know, what I need to know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're right there. Like literally, wherever you're sitting right now, they're right there in that room with you. They don't leave your side. Those two do not leave your side. You have a team, yes, 
that those two never leave your side. They never do. Um, Saba, are the beings that visit um, family a part of us? Yep, they are. A lot of them... Um, <clears throat> okay, so... Okay, I'm going to add this one thing in. This is last minute, so I'm sorry for those that left, but it'll be in the replay. So let me talk about this quickly. Um, so, we have star families that visit, but you have to understand there's more than one of you, okay? There is more than one of you. I think that's one of the questions that I, that I um, asked, and some people are like, no, there's only one of me. Some say, I think there's more. I don't know. There is. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, there is a total of 12. There's 12 of you, 12 of you, 12 of you, 12 of you, 12 of me, whatever, okay? Um, there are two of you, or maybe up to three, here on this planet, and the rest are on different realms and different dimensions, different planets, different galaxies, okay? And so sometimes you have these dreams, right? They're so real. You're like, damn, I was right there. It was... Another part, another the other part of you, and you're seeing that, okay. And if I can go, I'll go deeper into another video with that. Maybe next week I'll talk with that while we're talking dreams. I think someone asked me about dreams. So when you're being visited, right? Remember, you have a divine family, right, or star family. You have a big star family, and it goes way out, okay? And also, um, <clears throat> you have ancestors, known and unknown, that is so vast, it goes way out. Um, so there's a lot of us. There's so many of us. Um, and so they visit, they come through, they check, you know, they come in, they check on you, whatever, you know, give you a little blessing give you a little light whatever and um they all do they all do we're like this one big unit okay so yeah they do so once you understand that there's more of you so then there are things going on and sometimes you just get this inkling this feeling inside and you're like i know it's your other self too so one of me are always in my dreams that live there always no, your dreams, your dreams are showing you, um, okay, so let's, let's break this down, okay? Let's break this down. When you have a dream, right, the physical body is resting. The spirit never rests. It's awake 24-7, seven days a week, 360 times, you know, a year, days a year. It doesn't know anything about that. It's only the human body that needs it. So your mind is going to utilize that word dream, but you're actually continuing what you're doing <laughs> spiritually, right? So your while your physical body sleeps, your spirit is going to go and do what you got to do. You need the body needs to rest. It knows that for a how many amount of hours. So during that time, it's going to leave and go do what it got to do somewhere else. So in your in your your mindset, it feels and looks like a dream, but it's actually real. So your are your spirit is actually doing the things it has to do, whether it's on this earth plane, or it enters another portal or another dimension, another realm to go do whatever. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I'll go deeper in another video. Um, <clears throat> but just know your spirit never sleeps. It doesn't know anything about that. It just knows the body gets tired and it needs to lay down. Remember, your spirit's bigger than your body. So because your spirit's bigger than your body, it's going to do other things too. You understand? So while the body's resting... It's going to go <laughs> and do its thing. Uh, uh, wow. Yeah, Becca. Uh, okay, Bernita, you said what? Does it count for being a twin or is that different? So twins are interesting, okay, because you guys are just like, 
are star beings, okay? Y'all, y'all came together, y'all been together for, I don't know, aeons, <laughs> and you came together, so in your, in your, um, it doesn't, it, it's not quite um, different. The only thing is like you have a body, she has a body. And then when y'all go to sleep, unless y'all doing everything at the same time and doing everything at the same time, then there's a mission that you guys do together or complete together or whatever. So sometimes the twins, because it's two of you that came down together, you may know the mission and she may not. Or she may know the mission and you may not. And if you know it, that's why I say ask your guides. If you know it, ask it because then you guys can really, it's almost like a tag team. You're superpowers. You're big. You're like a boon. You know, it's super awesome. <laughs> yeah, your light body is always traveling. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Yeah. I hope that made sense, um, Bernita, but I'll go deeper, but... For, because you guys came together, that's what's so amazing when it comes to twins. Because um, you guys are like, you guys have, you guys are like a whole, okay? Like in an egg, you know? Um, you're one half, she's the other half, but you guys together is like a whole. You understand? You guys are like superpowers. You guys can do amazing things. And I think if you work together really like on that spiritual level, you guys will be like completing whatever you got to do <laughs> real quickly, you know? <laughs> right, Jean? Yeah, because you guys got missions to do together. So um, twins have that. That's why it's so, I love it. It's so amazing. You guys are able to do things a lot faster and um, and make it happen a lot quicker. You understand me? So if you guys like do this homework that I said, that I gave you guys, if you do this homework, you are going to be amazed at what you can do by the end of the week or even before then. Just do it. Like really do it. Dive deep and do it. Girl, y'all y'all gonna be like, we got this, Naj. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, you guys are superpowers. So it's really amazing when twins actually connect on that spiritual plane and actually do what they got to do. Brilliant. <laughs> awesome, Beck. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Norma. I'm about to close down and you guys can watch the um, repeat. So I'm so if you if you guys want more um more details on dreams and stuff and um you know your many selves or whatever just put that question put those questions down in the comments and I'll put together something so that we can speak on it as a topic for Friday next Friday which is May 4th Next Friday, May 4th at 7.30 p.m. All right? I'm so excited. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hot. Hot topic next week on dreams and so much more light bodies and all that stuff. Okay? <laughs> Yay. Awesome. So you guys have an awesome night. Do your homework because I'm going to ask about it. I'm going to ask. Y'all know me already. I'm going to ask about it. <laughs> okay? Have a good night, and I will talk to you in tutus. Mwah. Namaste, ladies. Namaste, guys. Woo. Namaste. Yes, you have a good night.